Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to create that collision and be able to detect it when one of our projectiles actually hits an evil QB. So to start off with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into the script and we're going to use another Unity method that they give us and we're going to use on trigger enter. So we'll get that set up first. So it's void on trigger enter. And sometimes I forget what parameters go in where. And if you ever get like that, you don't know if it's a collider or a collision. I'm pretty sure this was a collider, but even if I don't know, I can go ahead and take a look again, just command apostrophe. That's gonna go ahead and open up our documentation. And here we go, mono behavior on trigger enter. And we can actually just come down here and take a look. And sure enough, it does take a collider. So I'm actually just gonna copy that. We'll go ahead, we'll paste that in. I'm going to save it. Then just for the sake of being able to display something on the screen when something happens or when we actually have this on trigger enter while well, trigger, I'm going to go ahead and use the debug dot log. Now there's actually a few here we can use. There's debug dot log and that will output white text into our console. And this is the one I'm actually going to use. There's also log warning, which does pretty much the exact same thing, except the text is going to be yellow. There's also a log error. And there's a few others, but just keep those in mind. If you're going ahead and you want to test certain functionality out, but you're not exactly sure where certain messages are coming from, you can actually go ahead and color code them in your scripts. So even though the red ones are generally reserved for errors that Unity throws, you can actually go ahead and use them for out of all your collision tests and your yellow ones could be used for all your ray casting tests or something like that. But that's completely up to you. So this debug log, it takes a string. Now, when this goes off, this is the first time we've come across anything inside of these parentheses. And these are just parameters, basically things that we get to work with that when the event fires off, we get information about. And in this case, this other is just the name of the collider that we collided with. Well, it's not actually the name, it's, it's the reference. It's what we're calling it in code. So we can actually go ahead and come in here and say other dot, and then we can just say name. We can even go as far as just to say tag, and let's actually do that. Since we already played around with the tags earlier, we'll save that off. I'm gonna come back into Unity. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Actually, it will not work right away if we go ahead and hit play. I'm gonna go shoot a few things. Nothing is gonna happen because we actually have to play around with the collider a bit as well. Right now it's set to be a regular collider and we have to set it to be a trigger. So if I start shooting it, I'm not getting anything. So let's check that out. I'm gonna go ahead, turn my sound off, not up. So in our console, we weren't getting anything. So let's go ahead, we're gonna select our projectile down here. And if we come up to the collider, we have this option here for is trigger. I'm gonna go ahead and just check that. Now you have the ability to detect triggers, but there's one other thing we have to do. In order for any of this detection to go on, we have to start using rigid bodies. And I generally don't like to go out and just throw rigid bodies on everything. You really should sit down and try to think, you know, what's gonna be colliding with what, and you know, where do I actually need these rigid bodies? But this is our first project. It's super simple. We can just go ahead and actually just put rigid bodies everywhere. So I'm going to add the component. And there we go. We want a rigid body, not a rigid body 2D. When we get into 2D stuff, we can use it. And we have a few parameters here, but for the sake of this one, we're just going to untick the use gravity. If we don't tick it, the ball is going to want to fall down. Well, because gravity's pulling it. And we don't want that because we're actually not moving the ball through physics. We're actually just moving the ball through its transform. So we've got a rigid body. We've told our collider to be an is trigger. Everything should be good. So I'm just gonna go ahead, save the project, make sure everything is saved so it doesn't crash. And then let's go ahead, we'll jump back in and start shooting a cube. Try to, should make it faster too. But we notice that we're getting the tag now for the enemy. And we could also go ahead and tag the train too so that when we shoot something it well does something else we can actually set it up that if it hits anything make it uh like disappear 
But if it hits uh, an enemy, then go ahead and add points to our score. So if we take a look here, uh, one thing to notice here on the console is when you get a lot of different options here, we have the claps, and by clicking that, it'll take all the ones that are repeating over and over again and just put them together. And then you can see how many of each there was. So if the order itself doesn't matter, you just need to see what fired and how many times. Uh, claps is really good for that. So the untagged is just when it was hitting the train or really anything untagged. I don't think we have our house tagged. But the one we're concerned about right now is this enemy part. And apparently we hit him 38 times. So let's actually go ahead and destroy the projectile when we actually hit the enemy. And we don't have a score set up yet to actually give us 100, but we can use this debug system to you know, notify us that we actually hit an enemy. So really all we gotta do is come back into our script. And we're gonna use a conditional statement here. So that means we need an if. And what we're going to say is if other dot tag, and we're using equals equals because it's a comparison. And the tag we're looking for is enemy. Now spelling does matter. And just a quick note on this here. Uh, when you want to assign a value, you know, assignment is one equals. When you're comparing two things to see if they actually equal the same, you want two equal signs. So I'm gonna come down, we'll come inside of here. So if what we hit was an enemy, I'm gonna go ahead and let's call die. Before we do that, we wanna cancel this invoke. Well, we, should, we don't actually have to because it's just gonna kill this script anyway. But for the sake of tidiness and just, just exposing you to it, there's a cancel invoke which if you read here, it cancels all invoke calls on this mono behavior. So this component, we're gonna cancel all the invokes. So if, if it was just about to die anyway, we're gonna tell it to stop. Then we're going to have to put some sort of debug in here. This is where we wanna add a score. If I can type. There we go. And then go ahead and call that die method itself. And like I said, we don't really need this because when we call that die, since this is all called in one frame, it'll actually go ahead and you know, kill this component before it even gets a chance to finish off the invoke. But for the sake of completeness, I'm just gonna put it there anyway. So with that done, let's come back into Unity. I'm gonna go ahead. My console's cleared out. Let's run around. Let's go find something to shoot. So if we start shooting, which is actually kind of funny, we should make the ball a little faster too, because if we run and shoot, you know, they're traveling their right course, but because we're actually moving almost as fast as the bullets, it looks a little weird. But anyway, here comes a cube. And sure enough, we're scoring some points when we hit it. There is a couple other things we can do here. So we're gonna score some points. What we can also do is take that thing that we hit, which is other dot game object. So that means we can actually go ahead and get that game object. And since we can grab it, we can say, destroy it. then give us the points, then destroy ourselves. Now remember, you want to destroy yourselves last because if you called it up here first, then this would go ahead and kill itself before it had a chance to finish anything. So we'll go ahead, we'll start this back up. Now when we shoot it, it should get rid of it. And let's look at the message that we're supposed to score some points. So we'll hurry up, run over there. Take a look, there's one. Boom, he's gone and we scored some points, yeah. All right, so in the next video, let's go ahead and we'll start taking a look at the UI system and create some sort of score. Maybe we'll put a little score up here in the corner just to keep track of the score while we're playing. Then the only thing after that is we need a way for the player to die. So we'll go ahead and set it up that 
If for some reason a cube ever does get to us and touches us, uh, we'll just die. 